joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So, hey, y'all, I'm so sorry for the huge delay. I'm serious, y'all. Getting out these episodes has been an absolute <laughs> mess. You know, and, and, and I can tell y'all just in my years of doing this, I've been at this for a long time. I know some of y'all just hearing about me and just you know, seeing me on YouTube because, you know, my day ones, y'all been with me from probably 15 years ago when I did my first online magazine. But there's some of y'all who found out about me in um, 2017 when I started my podcast, right? And I still have it. You get that. The link is in the description. But y'all, when I first started that, my voice was hoarse for like the first three months because I knew that there was opposition because of the things that I was saying. And I felt this so strongly with the forgiveness series. And I know people are waiting to get more information. So let me just tell y'all, yesterday I filmed a recording for 51 minutes about ego-driven unforgiveness. And when I tell y'all, it took me seven hours to upload it. And then when it uploaded, first of all, it took seven hours because I did three attempts. Each attempt took about an hour and some change. And by the time it finally came up seven hours later, that mug was choppy, had spaces in it. I'd never had that experience before. So I just want to say this. If you are partaking, if you have not, please download the ebook. Everything is oily, baby. It's all oily, okay? <laughs> it is oily. It is rolling. It's simple. It's not a whole lot of information, but it's enough for you to digest. Say some good decrees and declarations and some wonderful prayers. Helps you see some some issues that may come when, we, when we're riddled with unforgiveness and just things that we know that God may not want us to partake in as a result of being unforgiving towards others. And most importantly, like day one, being unforgiving towards yourself, right? The Bible says that, you know, God, he, you got to forgive other people or God is not going to forgive you. And it's just very simple. And I necessarily, I'm not always a proponent of, oh, forgive them, forgive them. I'm not going to lie and stunt and say I'm just easily forgiving people, but I can say, the older I get, I'm learning more perspectives on forgiveness. And I think that I'm starting to really understand why God, God wants it that way. Because we just don't understand. It's just such a tremendous block when you do not allow yourself the opportunity to um, forgive and just see what's on the other side of that forgiveness, right? So with that being said, y'all, today I'm talking to you again about ego. I was not able to use the one yesterday, but I'm going to tell you how funny God is. When I went to search my files to, to find out uh, some information that I wanted to add, something popped up that I did called Next Level Forgiveness. And I was like, what is this? Y'all, I recorded something in 2018 called Next Level Forgiveness. Okay, I have over 800 YouTube videos and over what, 500, I think, podcasts. So I've done thousands, like over, well over a thousand, almost 2000 pieces of content in this form. So I didn't remember, you know, I write about so many things. I speak about so many things, right? So when I went to go and, and uh, open it, I listened to it and said, oh my God. So see what the enemy meant for harm, God meant for good. So guess what I'm going to do today? I am not only going to tell you what I need to tell you in this first part of this video, but I'm also going to let you hear next level forgiveness because guess what it's about? It's about the ego. How about that? God is so good. So now you're getting double the message. The enemy thought he was going to shut me down with one, but he's not. You're going to get a two for one today. And I pray that this is blessing you, is breaking chains off of you. And my goodness, y'all, I'm serious. I am speechless Thank you for sewing. That is always such a weird shock to me because I never really lead with that. So it's it just it's amazing to me when people go find my stuff and try to send me something. Even when you email me, when you post comments, I don't listen. I can't catch everything, but when I do, I genuinely try to respond or at least like it or or say something if I can. But no, I really appreciate y'all. Please, like I man, I really appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? So. Let's just get in because that episode that I'm going to be posting, that is 18 minutes. So this will probably be maybe about 10 because I wanted to speak 
on ego the same way I initially was going to speak about ego, but I want to add a little twist to it in this prelude in this first 10 minutes. So y'all, if you go back and you look at our playlist, you'll see that on the first day we talked about um, personally forgiving yourself. And on the second day, we talked about your abuser, right? And so now we're talking about ego-based unforgiveness. Now, if you know anything about forgiveness or uh, just anything about feeling like you cannot forgive someone, we know that that is a hard place. But the the thing I kind of warned you guys about, if you did listen to the last episode, I did let you know that this one was going to take a bit of a turn because this was not going to be from the same posture as the one about forgiving your abuser. And be, and this is because the types of the last three types of unforgiveness I'm going to talk about, it's going to be about you doing some self-reflection and you detaching from ideas that you have because they're not rooted in happiness because of something that happened with someone and it didn't turn out the way you thought it should turn out. And that is what we're going to talk about because usually that's how come the enemy slides past through on people because he, he knows that no, he knows that people are going to be so caught up in not forgiving that person that they're not going to want to take a look at themselves. So this is why it's tricky. And this is why I know the enemy just does not want me to put these things out because that is what I'm going to talk about. And I want to just start y'all. If you go to the ebook on page 10, you can follow along with me, right? So this is what it says. When you experience ego-based unforgiveness, these are some, but not all of the seeds the enemy may try to plan in you. Now watch this. What you don't understand, y'all, about ego-driven and ego-based unforgiveness is that it's truly riddled in things that make you hyper-focused on yourself. God cannot flourish when your whole driving force goes back to, I did this, and I'm this person, and, and, and you can see by me doing all of this. Now, I don't got nothing to say. Just look at what I did. God is never pleased with that. God is never pleased by works. Please hear me out. This is something I think a lot of people struggle with when it comes down to like praying and fasting. Because a lot of times we get ourselves in a trick bag because we want to do this praying. We want to do this fasting. We're trying to find the coolest fast. And unfortunately, because there's so many people lying in these streets about if you do this fast for marriage and if you do this for this and that. Yo, God is not Santa Claus. You know, and a lot of times, again, elephant in the room is going to make some people mad, but it is what it is. Cause I, and again, I'm telling y'all from my own experience, but y'all, even sometimes the praying and fasting, if it's not genuinely done from the right place, I don't care how you butter it up and make it sound all Jesus-y and religious. If you are not doing that correctly, guess what? Your fasting could be ego-driven too, and you don't even realize it because you're so hung up on wanting to get a husband. You got to do that three-day Esther fast because this one said it and this one got a husband. Yo, that's not how that works. If you are fasting because you want God to give you something, you might as well call him a Santa Claus, okay? Because here's the thing. If you are looking for God to give you something out of a fast, because I want to edit that. I do think you should expect something from a fast. But I do think if you expect anything from it, it should be based on something that's from the spirit of God, not a tangible thing. I think that in God's greatness and goodness, we fast and pray, turn down our plates and separate our, ourselves from distractions that can cause our ego to be inflamed and amplified. But I do think at its core, Fasting is really about stealing away and being with your father and creating that intimacy. I know people going to have a lot of opinions about that and that's fine. But what I'm just really trying to focus on is the fact that if your motive is not correct, you can be doing ego driven fasting. And then all of a sudden you get mad at God because you don't get the result from that fast. And now you have unforgiveness toward God. Now that's the real elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about. I said that yesterday on a recording and that's probably why it was not uploaded because people don't like to hear stuff like that. It doesn't sound cute. It doesn't sound cool. People don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important that you really take time to understand. And I really think that you look at the current situations in your life, not from the abuser and not from you getting over the hump of not forgiving yourself personally, but I want you to go back and have a look at the last couple people, if any, where you feel like, man, I'm struggling with forgiving them. 
Because what you're going to find is if you are still struggling with forgiving them, then you have to get to a root cause of that. And there is always a root cause. And once you get to that and you start to pay attention to the things that ego-based unforgiveness does, you might recognize that you might not be forgiving that person, not because what they did was so wrong. In fact, you might even discover what they did in actuality wasn't wrong at all. But what they did was something that made you feel wronged. And as a result, your ego has decided that this person does not deserve my forgiveness because they crushed my ego. They didn't do what I wanted them to do. I don't care if they had a valid point. I'm not even listening. I said what I said. That is ego-based unforgiveness. And what we don't understand with that is, just like the other ones we've been talking about, they all come with stuff. They all come with stuff that's not helpful. They all come with stuff that try to ruin us. And they certainly all come with stuff that keep us in a place where we can forfeit the things that God has for us. Because if we so caught up on, you know, not forgiving somebody, then that means that you wasting a whole bunch of time not showing people grace and mercy when it can be a bit arrogant because you don't know what's in your future. We don't know what's in our future. And, and, and that, that sin of unforgiveness and that sin of, you know, us as human beings just really getting caught up in our own stuff, there's, a, there's an arrogance there. Because what we end up doing is saying, hey, well, you know, I don't need that. I don't need them. They need me. Or, you know, whatever. Nobody does that to me. Whatever your stance is, everybody has a different stance on these things, right? But whatever your stance may be, right? Whatever your stance may be. At the end of the day, it is so important that you are honest and you are truthful with yourself about this part of the process because it's necessary and it's mandatory in order for you to get the thing that God has for you, period. There's no way of getting around it. I'm telling y'all. There's no way of getting around it. And with that being said, I want you to open up to the booklet. If you had, just pause it real quick and go ahead and download it. It'll take you maybe two minutes tops. The link is right underneath the description of this video. And I want you to check this out, right? Now, while we are pulling this up, because I'm pulling it up right now, I had it open and it, it went away. Okay, there it is. So while we're pulling this up, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about how when you think about the person that you might be struggling with unforgiveness with, and, and you think it might be rooted in ego based on some of the things I've said, you're not sure, but you're listening to see if that might be the root cause. The things that I'm about to mention to you right now, are some things or some seeds that will be planted. And if you have any of these, and when you sit down and think about it, you realize you've been having these ever since you fell out with this person or you feel like it's been amplified, that's more than likely a sign your unforgiveness toward this person has allowed the enemy to drop these things right here in the space where they don't need to be. And it's causing you to literally forfeit the things that God has for you because you have literally allowed some of these things to take root. So here are some of the things. Number one is overconfidence. You could be operating in a false reality. You could have blind spots, confusion, head, excuse me, hard headedness, anger, frustration, arrogance, closed mindedness, fear, shame, embarrassment, meanness, cruelty, dishonesty, belittling, illusions, bitterness, and resentment. And that's just a few. Cause let me, yo, let me, let me tell you what the real deal is. You want to know why ego based unforgiveness is really, really bad. The enemy uses this type of violation usually to prevent you from excelling and operating as a successful person or leader. The goal is to make you get so full of yourself that you excuse yourself from blame and you place it on everyone but you. This demonic tactic is often the root of failed God given partnerships relationships and opportunities because the goal is for you to convince yourself and others that the offense is unforgivable when the truth is pride is giving you a distorted view of the actual solutions that can rectify the uh, uh, the rectify the offense that's what the real deal is that's what's really going on that's the real elephant in the room right there because see there's a way that this thing can be solved but think about it. You don't have to tell me, but I'm going to be honest with you. How many of y'all mad at somebody right now? Because they're not, you think they foul and they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing to you. Right? And so your ego, then, you know, and, and this is real life. 
You might have told a bunch of people about them and started dragging them and saying it. This person was this and now they that now. But I want you to think about something. And, I, and I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny, but I want you to really think about something. I want you to go back and I want you to look back at when you started feeling that way about them. And even when they changed, because again, with this series, I'm trying not to focus so much on the other people, but I'm trying to get you to focus on you because you are always the common denominator in every one of your situations. And what happens with ego, y'all, is sad, but it's true. What happens with ego, ego really, really makes you think that you are just a, I'm always a good person and I'm always so nice and I'm this and I'm that and I don't do this and I, it's like, dude, it, it, if you always so perfect like that, then why certain situations keep happening? That is the part that people don't like to admit because everybody wants to appear like they're perfect. And believe it or not, okay, I can speak on this because I walked this walk for a season. When you're in a space where you're trying to figure out your spiritual stuff and if you're, you know, you're going to be operating in a vocation or operating, you know, in whatever, uh, uh, your goals, your career, you're trying to figure that stuff out. You know, you got to be careful, even if you're a woman or a man of God, and I'm going to just call it out. You got to be careful that you don't start to have a bit of a, 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 a cockiness or a bit of a, a self-righteousness up in here because it's easy to, it's easy to feel that right here. I'm not going to lie. It's very easy to feel that. And you want to know why it's so easy to feel that because the enemy knows that when you pretty much try to give your life up and say, Lord, I'm gonna live for you. You get certain benefits of that. You know, there's a benefit when you give your life to the Lord, right? We know that. But where, where, where a lot of Christians mess up is they start to think that they're exempt. They might say that they know that they're not, but their behavior acts as if they're exempt from doing things incorrectly or missing God or doing things wrong. And one of the things that has set me free years ago and even now is that I just know I'm not a perfect person and I'm more than willing to address that and deal with that. But I also know this too, you know, again, another elephant in the room is some, y'all, the room is packed with elephants. This is why the enemy don't want you to get healing. Okay. Check this out. So when you get to a point where your, your, your ego is making you not forgive a person. Okay. It could even come to the point where you say, well, I forgive them, but I don't mess with them no more. I forgive them. No, you do know. Sometimes you could still really not forgive them. And you could say that, right? See that again, stuff. Nobody want to admit. You could say that, but you, you're mad. And I can remember one time some years ago, I was mad at somebody, right? And I was like, man, I was so mad that they did that to me. I was like, oh, I was so mad. I can't believe they did that, whatever. And then after some time, y'all, just after some time passed and really genuinely after the time passed, I'm like, man, I think I'm still, I'm still a little bitter. But at the time, I didn't even want to realize that I was feeling unforgiveness toward them. I'm not going to lie. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to admit the feelings that I was having about it because I still wanted to be the good guy in the situation. I wanted to create this person to be a monster because me and that person used to be so close, right? But check this out. The real gag, y'all, <laughs> the real gag was when it finally started to make sense to me when the Holy Spirit said, okay, Robin, you've been mad all this time, but go back and pay attention. Go back to how was it before you came to this point with them? And you want to know what I realized? The whole time that person had kept telling me what they were going through and, and how things were happening. And they kept trying to gently let me know, hey, these things are going on in my life, blah, 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 right? All of these things. But you know what I was doing? Because I was so used to getting along with them a certain way, I started villainizing them. And I started getting angry because we weren't getting down the way we used to. So then I got mad and internalized that. And the truth was, when I went back, and saw, I said, oh my God, I kept trying to force this thing. And this person kept trying to warn me that they just weren't in the same place. And so this whole time I went and made it about me when they kept trying to tell me in so many terms, Hey, look, I just got this going on. It's some shifting happened, but it's cool. We still cool, but I didn't want to take it like that. So how many of y'all mad at people right now? And if you sat down and just trace back, you just trace back. And you see like, oh, wow, like I might have just didn't really listen to them when they kept trying to tell me, but I'm trying to force, you know, I'm trying to force them to 
be a certain way with me after there was a shift and I felt like a fool after because I paid attention to the shift. See, that's why the ego is tricky. The ego will make you think that everything you're doing is all good when in actuality is pretty much absolutely not. It's pretty much the opposite. It's pretty much not what you're thinking. And it's nothing worse for an ego to be contrary to what, what it wants to be. The ego hates that because it's all about itself. You know, like the, the ego has to be focused on itself. So something I want you to think about too. Now check this out. This is also in the ebook. Okay. Now I listed those things that you could possibly be experiencing as a result of ego based unforgiveness. But I want you to think about this. This is how, this is the statement that I said when it came down to that. It says, this is, this is something that you might say. This makes me feel like Jeopardy. Name something you might say when you are experiencing ego unforgiveness. Here's this. You might hear the nerve of them. Who do they think they are? I did X, Y, and Z for them, and I didn't have to do anything for them. That could be a sign you could be holding unforgiveness towards somebody and maybe your heart might not have been in the right place. I know, I know you didn't want to hear that, but y'all, we got to be honest. This is how, this is how we get caught up in these snares because we, we, we're so used to saying the same thing. We're so used to quote unquote, you know, doing the same thing. Like y'all, I know somebody in my life. In fact, one of my aunts. Nobody knows what this aunt does for other people. And you want to know how I know? Because other people have told me how this woman has blessed them, but nobody knows. You will never hear this woman say, well, I did this for her. I did this for him. You don't, nobody knows. It's like this person is such a good person. Other people got their name in the street because they sounded like that. That's when you know it's done from the heart. Some of y'all have ego-based unforgiveness because you came at the person like you were genuinely trying to help, but you had a motive. And maybe if your motive wasn't for now, it might have been for later. Come on, y'all. Let's break out of this stuff. Maybe your motive was, oh, I know they're going to be blow up. She's connected. He's connected. I'll be cool with them. Or, you know what? I need this done. If I do this for them, then they can do that. Y'all, that's not cool. Now, if you set it out the gate, Absolutely. I'm not a fan of calling people opportunists and using these words with negative connotation. There's nothing wrong with the person saying, hey, if I give you this, will you give me that? I think that that's just being up for upfront and honest. And you, you know what what's going on with the exchange. I think that that's how you're supposed to do things. But I think when you come off to people like you're acting as if you have a good heart. But as soon as they do something you don't like, you throw that up in their faces and you try to make them feel bad about it. That is where ego-based unforgiveness comes in. And this whole time you over here stunting like you did this and you did that. And God is not pleased with you. Y'all, I'm telling you, when, when I learn these type of lessons and I'm like, man, I didn't do that right. Golly. Hey, God is like, but daughter, you're not perfect. I don't need you to be me. I need you to be you. But when you learn and when you know better, you got to do better. Period. When you know better, you got to do better. And that's what it boils down to at the end of the day. So check this out. Y'all, what, what do we have to do once we understand the bigger picture? Once we understand how the enemy is acting, once we understand how God is trying to open up doors for us and trying to get us from out of these snares, we have to then go to God to see how he deals with ego. Now, I will read one scripture from this, and then I want you to go. You got to go to the ebook and download the rest. It's about 20 scriptures in the ebook, I think. But here's the one I want you to ride with. Philippians 2 and 3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Y'all, we got we to gotta stop with allowing unforgiveness, seeds of unforgiveness to be planted in our, in our hearts. And we don't understand it. We only not forgiving that person because of the root of our own ego. 
I know some of y'all going to hear this today and be like, my God, I never thought about it like that. Guess what? I didn't either. So as soon as I figured it out, I tried to figure out a way to put it out here to tell other people. Because I didn't. I know that I wasn't the only person that's experienced this. I know it because I genuinely was passionately pleading my case to other people and I was still wrong. Just because you're passionate and just because you go up an octave and just because you can spin a story and you can get a whole bunch of other people to agree with you, it doesn't make it true. It just doesn't make it true. So you, you, you have to find, you have to find a balance of understanding why your ego keeps getting you caught into a snare. And then you have to understand if I really just been mad at this person, this person wasn't an abuser. There was nothing like that. We just had this thing going and I'm like, oh, I forgive them, but I'm not messing with them no more. I want you to even revisit some of those situations. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You got to revisit those too, because some of the people you saying you forgiven, no, you haven't. Again, there goes that arrogance. That arrogance just pops up in and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm good. Like, we're fine. You know, I want you to understand that God is not playing with us when it comes to this. He's not. And I think that now that you have a good baseline for what this looks like and how God wants us to move forward, I'm going to now segue you into the next level greatness, which in that particular episode, we talk about forgiveness and ego-based forgiveness. And then right at the end of it, you're going to get the ego prayer and then we'll be done with this episode. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Stay tuned. I'll be right back at the end and we're going to pray this thing out. Hey everyone. And thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. And I am so appreciative of you guys just taking a few minutes out to kick it with your girl, just to you know, check in and see how things are going. You guys know if, um, if you don't know, rather, um, I am wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. And I like to do whatever it is God leads me to do to inspire you to be great and to be who you are. Not to be who someone else is, but to be exactly who it is that God called you to be. So even in some of my musings and rantings, I hope that in some way, shape or form, it can add some type of value to your life because that is what a part of the calling on my life is. So with that being said, guys, the other day I made a Facebook post and then I took that post and I carried it over to my IG and um, I'm going to read it to you because, you know, God just led me to talk about it. He was like, you know what? Talk about that. Talk about that meme because it's it's somebody's going to need to hear it. So in obedience, I'm going to do that. So this is what it simply says. Sometimes the key to your next level is forgiving someone who isn't sorry. Read it again. Sometimes the key to your next level is forgiving someone who isn't sorry. Is any of you listening right now in a position where you know that you have to forgive someone and it's literally beginning to affect other areas of your life because you are like that hard up on not wanting to forgive them? Just think about it for a moment. Because it's easy to tell somebody to forgive someone. But it's a lot harder to actually do it. And even when I wrote it, I was like, God, I feel this in my gut. I feel this in my soul. Because right then, he just showed me that the level, the next level that so many of us have been praying to get to. Some people want to be married. Some people want to upgrade on their living situation. They want to upgrade on their job, their finances, their health. All of these things. And you're thinking, well... I hate that person and I hate what they did to me, but I'm doing all these great things in this area of my life. You're thinking that it doesn't have to do with it, but this is something I've been saying for years now. When people say one thing doesn't have to do with the other, everything has to do with the other. Everything is connected. And especially when you're dealing with yourself, yo, that bitterness and anger that you have, where do you think that goes? You do know when you keep holding on to anything negative, it's energy. It'll literally start to fester on the inside. And you will literally be so far away from what it is that God wants for you because you are fixated on someone or something that has hurt you. Someone or something that has come against what it is that you need so that you can be on the highest level that you you need to be on. Think about that. Because here's the thing. If it's about 
your next level. And if it's about what you truly desire coming to pass, and if it's about somebody who don't really care, they're not even sorry that they hurt you. They're not even sorry that they hurt your loved one or they played you or they lied to you or they backstabbed you. They don't even care. Like they're not even sorry. Just logically think about it a moment. What exactly can you gain from that? Like what can you put in place to make them feel any kind of remorse other than inflicting physical pain on them? And even if you inflict physical pain on some people, they're still not going to be sorry. They might feel pain. But at what point do you not say, excuse me, at what point do you say enough? Because I can't make them feel the conviction that I feel they should feel concerning this situation or concerning me or concerning my loved one or whatever it is you beefing about. That is one of the quickest ways the enemy gets us. And I'm going to tell you, for years, that kind of stuff would hold me up. But, honey, let me tell you, you got to keep it moving. You got to keep it moving, moving, moving. Because let me tell you, tomorrow still going to be tomorrow. And then a the day after that and a day after that. So the world is going to keep on going. One of the old, oh boy, back in the G, y'all, when I was in school, listening to Hot Boys and all the New Orleans rappers back in my G. <laughs> I remember, I think it was on 400, was it on 400 Degrees? I can't remember. I, it was one of the old rap albums. I can't remember, but it was one of the Cash Money Boys albums. And your boy said, it's a dirty world, but he keep on spinning. And I hate to say that to y'all, but y'all know sometimes, you know, I, as much as I quote scriptures, y'all, I'm not going to lie. I know some incredible song lyrics that actually are applicable and they apply. Some of them even biblical at times when, with, with the accuracy of what they're saying. And a lot of times y'all know people use, sometimes their lyrics are scriptures that just reword them and they just say them in another way, but they're saying the same thing. Now, mind you, for all my Super Jesus-y people combing through everything I say. Listen, I am not substituting anything with scripture, but I am going to be Robin because I'm going to be my authentic self. And uh, in addition to it's a dirty world, it keeps on and it keep on spinning. You get it how you live. In addition to that, y'all know my favorite. What's my favorite? I know somebody going to say it. Real G's moving silence like lasagna. So with all of that being said, you're going to have to just pack up and keep it moving, baby. Because listen. The Lord got something else for you. He got a whole other thing for you. And it is not affiliated or contingent upon if this person feels guilt for mistreating you. You are holding up your blessings. You're holding up your life. Worrying about somebody who not even much thinking about you. Baby, look. Look here. You got to let it go. Because they're not. They're not worrying about you and I hate to say that I hate to sound cold-blooded and savage but sometimes that's what you need you need a good good old kick in the pants you need a good old bit of savagery just to snap you back into reality and to realize that you're perpetuating the the uh extension of you receiving what you're praying for Somebody's praying for the next level in some area of their life. Somebody listening right now and you are not realizing it's because of that big blurb of foolishness, foolery and animosity. You are not accessing what it is that you want. You're not getting to that level because you have barricaded yourself in behind animosity. I mentioned this the other day on the podcast. I'm going to mention it again. Mention it again. Unless you are a thief. Unless you are a thief, and I know you don't want to be known as a thief. Unless you are a thief, you have no business taking vengeance back from the Lord. Because vengeance is mine, said the Lord. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Lord says. Don't you try to be vengeful. Don't you be angry. Don't you be at a place where, well, no, you can be angry. But don't you be at a place where you allow your anger to cause unforgiveness and it causes you to want to retaliate. And that's the part we want to break off this thing today. We do not want you to be so inundated with the fact that this person has put themselves in a position to take you out. And you know what? Let me, let me tell you something that's a promise. And I know it might make you mad, but I hope it makes you so mad it makes you change. Because there's nothing, there's nothing greater than somebody making you so ticked off and so, uh, so mad about something that it inflicts change the right way. 
It causes you to do something else the right way. And that's what this is for. You want to go the other way. Because guess what? You got bigger fish to fry. You got a whole other level you're supposed to be on. And it has nothing to do with them. Because guess what? All the time you're wasting, they sitting pretty and they don't care because they don't feel like they owe you anything. And you can't choke that out of them. You can't bop that into them. You can't do any of that. You're going to have to accept the fact that that's what it is. And you have to make a choice. Either I want to stew on that and be tripping about that foolery. Or I want to go to my next level. I'm tired of being held up. I didn't know why I was held up. But now I'm starting to see. If I make a list of all these people I got animosity with. Man, I'm, I'm putting a big old spiritual block up. I can't even access the other door. I can't even access the other level. Because I literally have a ton of things that I'm keeping on the inside. Because I want this thing to go this way because they owe me. You know, and I saw somebody, they actually made a comment. I had several comments on the face, the actual Facebook post. But somebody made a comment on the IG post. And they, they simply said, you know, that's a tough call, especially when you gave so much and they didn't appreciate it. But dude, how much do we give to God? I mean, how much does God give to us and we don't appreciate him? That's cheeky. Now, see, in, 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 in New Orleans, we say cheeky. So you may not be familiar with what, what that means when I say it. But basically, cheeky is saying, like, you, you tripping, you selfish. Like, you want it to be, you, it's okay. It's like a double standard, essentially. Like, okay, you can say this and you can do that, but I can't say this and I can't do that. So it's a double standard. You know, so that's the thing, y'all. There's so many different things that God can say at us. Like, hey, you play me all the time, and I don't even call you on it. I don't ever disown you and throw you out. No, but you know, as human beings, we are not obligated to be God, which is our miracle and blessing because God has the worry of handling that. He has the worry of the vengeance. And this is what I will suggest before I leave, because somebody needs to know and be encouraged that it doesn't have to last. It doesn't have to be like this always, but this is what I need you to understand. You have a weapon. You can actually fix this situation. Okay. All you have to do is give it to God in prayer. Now, some of y'all might not like this. You're going to be like, uh-uh, Robin, you play too much. Now, you about to make me check out, girl. I don't want to listen to you no more. Listen, I feel you if you do. I respect that too. E die or. Don't matter. It really don't make me no never mind. Because at the end of the day, I have no desire to um, be a negative influence or bother anybody listening. It's all good. Hey, we just going to keep it moving. But I hope that that's not the case. But I just want to let you know I'm not mad at you. I'm not holding a gun in your head to listen to me or talk to me, but I'm going to say this to you because this is what was said to me in so many words, you know, a while ago when I had to encounter something like this as well, because again, we all go through, everybody go through, nobody's exempt. I have to keep reminding y'all of that. We all passing through this thing called life and we all making mistakes and we're all faced with challenges. All of us are, are. all of us have obstacles, right? Well, this is what I want you to do. And this is a, a suggestion. So bring it before the Lord and simply say, Lord, is there anything in this situation with this person that I do not forgive? If there's anything in me, do I have a log in my eye? Is there anything that I'm missing that's causing them to feel like they should not feel sorry or feel bad. Am I missing something? Is there something that you want me to see? Not him or her or me. What do you want me to see? You show me if I'm in the right. You show me if I'm in the right standing with you. Show me, show me if my, my, my pain and, and my feeling offended is not in vain. Show me that. But Lord, also... If you're trying, if you want to show me that perhaps I took the wrong approach or perhaps they are well within their rights for not feeling sorry because maybe there is something that I missed, reveal that to me because Lord, more than I, sh more than I have a desire to be unforgiving to you, I have a greater desire for you to be pleased with me. And because I want you to be pleased with me, Lord, I have to get down to the bottom of this thing. And although it's a lot easier for me to be angry, I also realize because I am playing on the devil's playground, because anger is on his side of the playground, it's not on the Lord's side of the playground, 
Hey, I'm playing with anger. So I know when I play with anger, it'd be all his little first cousins and kin folks because I'm on a turf. So when you're playing with the enemy, the enemy don't play fair. He don't fight fair. He don't play fair. He don't do that. He's a cheater. He's a liar. He's a sneak. He's a crook. So you get caught up in being angry at somebody. He's like, well, look, this is what I'm going to do. Look, your girl, she, she done left the side over there with, with, with the Lord. You dig? She done left from over there. So y'all come on this. Look, come over here. She over here by us right now because she want to be unforgiving and have some anger. You know, that's on our turf. That's how we get down. So look, this is what I want you to do. Hey, spirit of the lake, come here. Come jump over here. Because she's so distracted by being unforgiving toward them and being angry. I want you to cause a delay right here to her next level. Because she's going to be so busy being mad at them. You could just stand there and block that. So she don't even realize she got to cultivate this other stuff in order for her to get up to the next level. Because she's wasting all her time over there. And she, she, the enemy will say, okay, look. All right, delay. I got you. I got you posted up. All right, for unforgiveness and anger. I got you all in her face. Y'all chopping it up like besties now. Okay, look. I got delay over here. Okay, look. Spirit of confusion, spirit of confusion, come here. I want look. You be right here. You clutch. You right next to delay. So the minute she, the minute she try to walk away or something, I want you to just run up on it, give her some confusion, like throw something back in her face about the person she unforgiving toward, like make her get mad at him again. You dig? Like make her get mad again. And they be like, look, I'm going to just get one more. I'm going to get one more. Because see, it's really seven of us. So wait, no, I'm going to get two more. And not only am I going to get all of them, I'm going to get... The spirit <laughs> of animosity, and I'm gonna get the spirit of defeat, and I'm gonna get the spirit of hurt. I'm gonna get all them. Just bring bring the whole posse, bring the whole crew, and we are gonna get a good and tied up. And she gonna be so confused trying to get out of this labyrinth that we are creating for her is gonna be such a confusing maze that she gonna have to try to figure out how to get back on the other side by the Lord. See, that's what happens when we get, we get in those spaces of unforgiveness. That's what happens when we get in those spots because the enemy just pretty much literally, he, he literally does anything he feels like with us because we acquiesce and we give him that power. The minute we surrender to the things of, of the enemy, then we pretty much, we dance to his music. Whether we like it or not, it's that simple. We dance to his music. So... You have to make that choice. Now, like I said, I know some of y'all ain't going to want to rock with me no more. And I'm sorry, y'all. But I have to say that because I'm giving y'all the hard parts I go through. Not went through, go through. I mean, I'm still human. I'm, I still get my feelings hurt. Things happen. You know, but at the end of the day, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to be stuck anymore. I don't want to be in, in this thing. And some of y'all listen like, girl, he played me in that relationship. That don't have nothing to do with me getting promoted at my job. Let me show you how it does. Because in that same mind, in that same heart, that same body that you have, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, your whole mind. You can't compartmentalize. Because let me tell you, you can do that for a little while, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. And what you may not realize is you may be, you may have animosity with them and with him or who, her or whoever, and it's over there and don't have nothing to do with what you're doing at work. But what you're not realizing is when you're over there at work, you're not really giving your best. You're completing your projects and you're being consistent, but there is just something about you because you might, you end up losing a, a, an hour at work because you got caught up looking at the IG. You texting your best friend. Now you done called on your break. And now you're mad. Man, you got to tell your boy, man, man, you saw a man. She talking to such and such. You know, it. pay attention, y'all. <laughs> the enemy just makes that thing turn into a chain reaction. And it just keeps going and going. And baby, let me tell you. The enemy wants nothing more but for you to stay distracted. That's all he wants. And you'll be thinking, well, I don't have nothing to do with that. I'm rising up at the job. And guess what? You can rise all the way up to the ladder and get to the top and lose it all for that very thing you hold an unforgiveness toward. And you don't even think they go with each other. Huh. Trust me. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt multiple times. So I just want to say to you guys, be encouraged. And I know that this is a tough topic. But it's the truth and it's hard. It is not easy. So I just feel led to give you guys a couple scriptures. I feel like you need to just have some spiritual backing on this thing so that you can go to the Lord about it. I want you to go to Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Luke 17, 3 through 4. 
So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. If they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times, come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. And the last one I'll give you is this, Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. This is a real good one. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander. Allow with every form, excuse me, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ. God forgave you on why to inspire. I hope you are too. Hey guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode from 2018 that I added with ego about next level forgiveness. Next level forgiveness is what we need when we are dealing with ego based unforgiveness. So this is how we're going to close out guys. Again, Make sure if you haven't, I want you to download the ebook. The link is in the description box. I want you to like, subscribe, share, and please turn on the notifications, y'all. As y'all can see, there's been a lot of uh, attack with me trying to upload this. So at this point, I can't even promise when it'll come up. But if, you, if you're paying attention and you, you check it for them every day to see if they're up, go ahead and turn on the notifications so you'll know whenever something comes up. So let's just close out with a prayer. And if you have your ebook, we are on page 13. And we're going to pray this thing out. And then we're going to close out with a declaration. So here it goes. It says, Lord, I am sorry because I've come to realize that the unforgiveness I was struggling with was rooted in my flesh being displeased with plans that I wanted to execute. Although I was offended and felt disrespected, my inability to forgive the offense has made me realize that I am no better than the person that has offended me. Unless I see both sides, I'm wasting time being unforgiving when I can be moving on, making better choices, being led by you and not my ego. Lord, I won't lie and say that this is easy, but this new perspective has allowed me to see clearly that anything can be forgiven if I let you take over my heart. Create in me a clean heart and give me a right spirit. Father, please remove all unforgiveness that I've had in this matter. Replace it with forgiveness without grudge holding. I acknowledge and understand that I was justified in being upset concerning the actions done against me, but I am not justified in extending my dissatisfaction longer than I should have. Give me discernment and wisdom so that I can be better in my response and disposition in the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're closing out with our declaration right here. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I do not leave with my ego. My ego will no longer allow or cause unnecessary unforgiveness in my heart. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too.